So this hack is not debunked. This hack is very much so real and I encourage you. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are talking about the internet viral theory that a plant that roots quickly, such as a pothos, can help a slower rooting plant. Um, whatever it may be, regardless of type, if you have troubles rooting a plant, the secret to getting, you know, something like this to root quickly would be to add a pothos to your cutting water. I want to give a shout out to my friend Jeff at Everything Plants. He actually experimented with this and it worked. He couldn't believe it worked and he immediately messaged me and was like, what's going on? Why is this an actual hack? So I thought it'd be really fun to dive into why this is a hack. And so I actually just recently purchased a whole bunch of different cuttings as well as I had some imports come in. So if you guys have been on this channel long enough, you know my uh, indoor plant stuff, I get imported in the fall. And so with my imports, I've decided this year I'm doing a single uh, pothos. This is just a Marble Queen pothos cutting inside of my import or my cutting uh, bottle with some water and so we're going to talk about why this will exponentially expedite the process of root formation in these plants so ultimately this comes down to hormones there's two hormones in particular and we'll talk about what those hormones are and then also what environment is necessary to make this happen but it does come down to hormones and because some plants excrete hormones at a higher rate than others that means that excess will end up in the water so why is this the best way to explain this is when we look at the anatomy of a plant plants have something called vascular tissue these tissues have sieves and these sieves move products such as xylem and phloem now xylem and phloem are found throughout any plants regardless tropical vegetable you name it and they don't just carry hormones, they also carry nutrients, complex carbohydrates, sugars, um, proteins, whatever the plant needs is transported through these systems. They are like the veins, the lungs, the heart of the plant. They are regulated by water and the main mechanism in which nutrients, hormones, all this stuff moves through the plant is through water. Meaning if we have a cutting and we have it in water and that same water is exposed to a fast growing plant as well as a slow growing plant and we don't have a root system yet, all the xylem and the phloem is going to be excreted or moved through turgor pressure and those vascular tissues into that water. Meaning if we let that water sit long enough, the fast growing plant such as a pothos will excrete the hormones needed for root development into the water and then just by turgor pressure and natural progression or anatomy of the plant, the slower growing plant will adopt these excess hormones through osmosis, end up in the plant and therefore trigger faster root development. So this will work for any plant on the market. So ultimately when it comes to root development, we're relying on two hormones. The first one being auxin and the second one being cytokinins. And these actually work in tandem with each other. So it's important to keep them in balance. So auxins aren't necessarily geared towards root, but they are geared towards elongating cells, meaning they elongate the cells of both the stems so a really common way of saying this, roots, shoots, and leaves. So that's kind of, it's all over. If it comes to cell elongation, you do need the hormone auxin. Hello, future editing Ashley here. So I was editing the video and I thought another really cool thing about auxin that you guys probably would enjoy, I could literally do a whole video just on the hormone auxin, but phototropism. So any tropism within a plant is completely regulated by auxin. And so what auxin will do in the plant is if a plant needs to get closer to the sun or farther away from the sun, auxin will actually stack itself up or cause more cell development on one side or the other of the plant to help 
redirect it towards or away from light, depending on what the plant needs. So that is a phototropism. Now, auxin also is the regulator behind root development, and it will stack up cells onto the roots to either force it uh, farther down, maybe away from a uh, perched water table, a danger zone. Oxygen will pile up on one side and cause more cell development to actually help with the curvature of the plant. So just a fun fact, if you have a wavy plant or a plant doing some crazy things, oxen is to blame. Now, oxen works best when coupled with cytokinins. So if you have a cytokinin um, in present of an oxen, these two work in tandem with each other, especially when it comes to nodular formation on roots. So there is one journal that goes into a lot of depth with this. And I mean, houseplants don't get that much attention when it comes to research. It usually is the crops of the world that get the research because that is what feeds the world, not, you know, this poor squirmifermia in front of me. The Prairie Soils Journal, Plants and Soils Journal, has published a lot on hormones in plants, a lot of research behind it and how they interact with each other. So I'm uh, applying theory and my background in science and kind of combining the two to give you guys an answer on this. This isn't published research. This is just my theory, my hypothesis on why these pothos will cause um, an increase in root formation on slower forming plants. So cytokinins are present. The key here is that the auxin and the cytokinin are in balance. So if the auxins are at 50%, cytokinins are at 50%. However, if auxins move to 60% of the volume, then cytokinins move to 40%. So you can see how they are inversely related to one another. But what we're looking for is higher root development, not necessarily shoot development. And this is where I think the pothos come in handy. They must have an imbalance between auxins and cytokinins, meaning the auxin levels in a pothos and what it's emitted into the water is most likely lower than that of the cytokinin. This imbalance or higher level of cytokinin means that plants such as a, a philodendron, for example, will be able to root faster because it has access to an overabundance of cytokinin. Now, a philodendron or a monstera, something that's slower at rooting typically, will most likely have an equal balance of both auxin and cytokinin. Therefore, the root development is equal to the shoot development, meaning you're not gonna get more root than you are shoot, you're not gonna get more shoot than you do root, regardless of what you try to do. However, with a pothos added, this mixture ends up in the water. Now, people will use rooting hormone, and rooting hormone is very high in cytokinin. It also has auxin in it. However, it's not water-soluble version of it. It's not a plant-available version of it, meaning if you are to mix it in water, it's most likely not going to have a large effect. However, if you place a plant that already has all these hormones suspended in water in their xylem and their phloem, then the other plant is more likely to pick this up. So this hack is not debunked. This hack is very much so real. And I encourage you to go check out everything plants. Um, his post on it, Jeff, he, it's awesome. The results are legit. He did not fake this. It is very real. And so I will be doing that with all my imports. Yet to let me know in the comments down below if you guys want an import um, new plant tour. I don't do them very often. I'll probably do one a year. I don't get a ton of plants every month, but I do get like one or two. So from the last time you saw my collection to now, there's some big differences. <laughs> so if you guys want that, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and you have to let me know if you try this experiment or not. I will also be putting a post up on the blog all about this because it's, it's way too cool. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more of the science and exactly what's going on there. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.